Hello everyone! We have the heavily anticipated part 2 of my epic journey. So if you haven't seen my first video where I talked about weeks 1 through 5, I will link that down below. But in this video, we'll be covering weeks 6 through 10, as well as my entire experience and my thoughts from having completed this full program. I also just wanna express all of my thanks and appreciation for all of you guys that posted such amazing comments, really encouraging messages. They were literally so touching and I had no idea that that many of you would enjoy my video and find it motivating. But yes, without further ado, let's get into the video. First off, let's recap how we got here. In November 2020, I decided to start Caroline Gervan's EPIC program. Prior to quarantine, I maintained a pretty active lifestyle. I'm a former high school athlete and in college, I go to the gym pretty often. I really like weightlifting. During quarantine, I obviously got cut off from the gym and it just caused me to lose a lot of motivation to do anything. There were a couple months in quarantine where I really just didn't do any type of exercise. I lost a lot of strength, I lost a lot of endurance. After a couple of months of being a mush, I decided to try to get into home workout videos and home workout programs. I've tried Chloe Chain challenges, Pamela Reef, Madfit, Natasha. I've done a lot of different fitness influencers on YouTube. And then I found Caroline Gervan and I really wanted to try her EPIC program. I want to emphasize that when I started her program, I wasn't completely new to working out or home fitness. I had been doing other videos for a couple weeks already. However, at the same time, I was not prepared for how challenging the EPIC program was going to be. When I first started, I struggled so much. The EPIC program consists of 10 weeks with five workouts a week. All of the workouts are strength-based, except for one HIIT workout, and the workouts range from 30 minutes to an hour. Caroline used a heavier range of dumbbells than me. I only had 10 pound dumbbells, but the entire program was still very challenging. And after the first five weeks of this program, I had lost about three to four pounds and full inch off of my waist. Although I do really want to point out that physical changes were not my goal at all. Now, let's talk about what was different for the second half of this program and my expectations going into it. First of all, some of you may have known from my previous videos, but I've recently moved. I originally was doing all of the workouts in the basement in my house, but at the start of this year, I moved to an apartment in the city. And so I've had to change up the space and make adjustments for timing, as well as the fact that I am also cooking and feeding myself now. Second, I signed up for a half marathon. At the time of filming this, I am actually two days out from my race. I'm not gonna get into my running background here, but I was running about five to six days a week during the first half of this program, and it's something that I have definitely continued. What has happened is just that my running volume has increased, and I've just been a lot more mindful of structuring my epic workouts with my runs to help them complement each other. So with those two major differences going into the second half of this program, my main goal wasn't to observe any type of physical change. I just wanted to maintain my perseverance and consistency. The first half of this program was all about like getting used to that initial shock of these types of workouts. But now that I've gone through five weeks, my goal was really to keep it up. It was about sticking with it, not necessarily transforming myself. And just like my first video, I was not on any type of special diet for the second half of this program. I pretty much eat what I wanna eat when I wanna eat it. I have a what I eat in a day that I can link below in case you're interested. But the only thing that has semi-changed is just that because I cook and buy groceries for myself, a lot of my meals are a bit repetitive and a lot simpler than what I would eat at home. But I definitely still keep my pantry stacked with all of my favorite snacks and sweets. But yes, so that is a rundown. We can finally get into the workouts now. I will catch you guys at the end to talk about my thoughts. This was my first week in my apartment, and I quickly realized that most of Caroline's workouts are so apartment friendly. You only need a small space and there's no crazy jumping because she puts an emphasis on slow and controlled movements. This week featured a lot of complex movements, which, not gonna lie, took some brain power to keep track of. 
but I think it's actually so important to be mentally engaged in your workout in addition to being physically engaged. Sometimes I'll zone out and just be mindlessly doing an exercise wondering when the timer will beep. But with these workouts, I have to count my reps and think about what's coming up to make a super quick transition. It really keeps me focused and motivated and I think the time actually goes by faster. The cardio workout this week was very humbling. I hadn't really needed to go on my knees for push-ups that much in the first half of this program, but I quickly realized how much room I have to grow when my arms were pretty much wrecked after just two sets of this EMOM exercise. All right, this is the week six update. I am currently in my apartment and this week has been pretty chaotic trying to figure out how to work out in a much smaller space. Honestly, not that bad. Sorry if the camera angles aren't as great as before. And I did an EMOM for the first time. It was so challenging. So hopefully she throws in more of those towards the end of the program and I can see if I've improved and gotten better. So by this point, I had been in my apartment for over a week and my roommate had gone back to work. It was pretty much me, myself, and I for the majority of the day. I know this may be the norm for some people, but it was a little bit of a sharp change given that I had been living at home with my family for the past nine months. And I guess I realized being alone puts all the responsibility on you to stay consistent and on track. Usually at home, I can announce to people that I'm going to the basement to do my workout. But now it's like no one knows. I could procrastinate all I want and I could probably even skip the workout and no one's gonna hold me accountable. But of course, I do have you guys and filming this video is actually such a huge motivator. All of the overwhelming support and comments I got on my first video, they were starting to trickle in this week and it genuinely made me so happy. And I'm still in so much shock that all of you wrote such encouraging and supportive messages. This long weekend was my sister's birthday, so I actually took a bus home, which is why I'm back in this familiar setting for my Sunday workout. It was so nice to see my family in person again, and they definitely stuffed me with so much food. Not gonna lie, during this workout, I was feeling super queasy because I could feel all the food sloshing around in my stomach. But I took the jumps a bit easier, and you know what really matters is that I pushed through and I finished this workout. Hello, it is the week seven update. As you can see, I am back home home in Jersey in my room. The past two days, I've just been eating so much really good food. I had a lot of cake today. So this week has been my second week living alone in my apartment. Of course, I do have my roommate, but it does get lonely sometimes. So it was really nice to just come home, see my family. It definitely makes a huge difference in my mood and my energy levels. So I'm really excited to just get back to the city tomorrow and continue doing these workouts and progressing through the program. It's like almost 11 p.m. and I kind of just wanted to record me in this moment because I say a lot and I really do believe, I emphasize that it's so important to just eat what you want to eat but there's no perfect way to always feel so confident right now i am very bloated it's obviously not a very comfortable feeling and i just wanted to be upfront with having these moments you know i i look at myself in the mirror it's not that i look gross or disgusting or ugly i just look like i had a lot of food and those are normal moments i have those moments like and I just want to show that. Okay, I think I just like talked for a million years. But yeah, that's all I wanted to say. As you guys just saw, I spent the weekend back home with my family, where I indulged to a pretty large extent. In the first video of my epic journey, I talked about not letting food control my workouts and vice versa. And I still stand by that. Despite feeling kind of gross and icky after this weekend, I wanted to jump back into my workouts with the same enthusiasm as ever. But it's not always the easiest. I've come to realize that getting back on track or going back to normal is not eating clean 24-7. Normal is not eating clean 24-7. 
Normal is eating food that makes you and your body feel good, and that includes having a cupcake or a couple more chips when you want, regardless of what you ate the day before or the day before that. No, I'm obviously not promoting that you stuff yourself to the max at every single meal. But I think to cut yourself off after a weekend or to try to put a limit on the number of days you don't eat perfect is wrong and it makes you feel guilty when you naturally want some more chocolate after dinner a couple days later. In the past, I would have said that after this weekend, the following week should be by the book and free of any more indulgences. But that didn't happen. I love sweets and dessert. I always love a little sweet treat once, twice, or even more times a day. It's what makes me happy. And when I'm happy, I'm motivated to do my workouts and I feel good during my workouts. When you feel guilty and you work out to feel relief or a sense of security, that's when working out becomes punishment and you grow to hate it. So be happy when you work out and eat what makes you happy, not guilty. Hi everyone, this is the week eight update. I feel like I'm kind of seeing like a lot of definition in my arms, which I never really noticed before. Maybe if I like flex. Okay, wait. I don't have a lot to report for this week. It's just been very chill and consistent. And I'm super proud of myself for still keeping it up. It's been eight weeks. I'm doing the workout every single day to the best of my abilities. Hey, feeling good. As the end of the program started coming up, I came to the realization this week that my idea of progress or improvement probably wasn't actually going to happen. I thought that by this point I should have been crushing every single workout or at least completing every rep with amazing form and for the full time. But surprise surprise, I wasn't. I was still sweating buckets, gritting my teeth, begging the timer to end. I was still gasping for breath and taking breaks or slowing down. It was still an uphill battle. More like a literal vertical climb up the world's tallest mountain as a snowstorm is shooting ice pellets down at me. Okay, a little dramatic, but you get the point. The workouts were not getting easier. But that, like, this is the point. The workouts aren't supposed to become easy. You shouldn't be able to complete everything perfectly because growth happens when you push yourself past what you can do. If you only did what you were capable of or what was within your abilities, then how would you ever break out of that? If I know I can do 10 push-ups straight easy and I only do 10 push-ups during my workouts, then I'll only ever be able to do 10 push-ups. This week's HIIT workout made me feel like I had never even done the past eight weeks of the program. Two minutes in, I thought my heart was going to jump out of my chest and I would probably pass out before I even got to the halfway mark. All I could think about was, oh my god, why is this so hard right now? I've been doing this program for almost nine weeks and I'm ready to give up two minutes in. I was literally so confused and disappointed in myself. Growth happens in the moments where you're forced to stop, where you have to cut down from 20 reps to 10 reps to six reps with multiple breaks in between. Growth is not in the moments that you feel strongest, it's in the moments that you feel weakest. Hello, this is the week nine update. I can't believe I only have one week left. That's kind of insane. I'd say that this week has pretty much been super standard and normal except for the last day sunday so this was another email i was not looking forward to it but i was like hopefully i improved from the first time that workout wrecked me i feel like the important thing to take away from this is that no matter how far you've come on your fitness journey there's always room to grow there will always be things that you can't do or can't complete and things where you'll have to modify and do the easier version or do less reps. The purpose of this program isn't necessarily to make you invincible. It's about challenging yourself and clearly that workout was still a challenge for me. So I'm actually glad about it. Would I want to do that again in the near future? No, heck no. But I think it's a great way to go into my last week and this upcoming week is going to be a very stressful one because I have classes starting up as well as work and I still have my runs to go through because my half marathon is 
getting really close. But yeah. Okay, so we're finally in the home stretch, and this was by far the most chaotic week. This was my first full week of classes after having had the past month off for winter break and I was swamped with schoolwork and also work from my part-time job. But on the bright side, my roommate actually joined me for two of the workouts later on this week, and this was the first time I had done any of the workouts with a friend, and it was so much fun. For the very last workout, day 50, I was so nervous. One full hour of hit. I put on my workout clothes, and this was actually the same outfit I wore on day one. And then I just did the workout. It was kind of like any other day. I still sweated, I still struggled, and just like I had been noticing before, I was able to do exercises that I used to find impossible. I was completing exercises for the full amount of time. You'll see that I was doing single leg push-ups, pistol squats, push-up pulses, and let me tell you, it was not easy, but I was doing them. And finishing this workout was like the most surreal thing ever. I just finished the epic program, like it doesn't feel real, it was such an ordinary yet extraordinary workout, I mean I've talked about it before, like how I'm seeing improvement and strength, now that it is the last day, I was really thinking back to the beginning of this program when I would do the majority of these exercises and have to take so many breaks, not be able to do the full thing, have to do modifications. The lunge pulses, I went for the full 30 seconds. For the crunches, they were like V sit-ups that I, like a year ago, I know for a fact I could not do those and it's just insane. I'm just in shock. Alright, so yes. I finally finished the program. 10 weeks, 50 workouts. I did not miss a single workout. And I'm just, that's insane that I did this. I'm just so excited to get into my results right now for you guys. So here you can see my body at the start, the halfway mark, and the end. I'm also so sorry for this inconsistent lighting in the last video. My apartment bathroom was the only place with a solid white background. Realistically though, from 10 weeks ago, I did slim down a decent amount and I'd like to think that I look a little more toned in addition to just the lighting. And the majority of these changes happened during the first five weeks, which makes sense because the later five weeks weren't so much of a drastic change in my lifestyle. My weight stayed exactly the same during my second five weeks, which is ideal because I wanted to maintain and build muscle while my running volume was increasing. I also did lose some of my butt, sadly. I think it was largely in part because I didn't really prioritize protein in my diet, so it makes sense that my butt didn't magically grow. So I also want to talk about the results in terms of my physical and mental strength. As I've mentioned lots of times throughout my journey, there were so many movements and exercises that I struggled so much with in the beginning of this program that I was like powering through towards the end. There were exercises that I was giving up 10 seconds into a set that now I could go for the full 40, 45 seconds with. And that just is crazy to me and i didn't really realize it until i was looking back on all this footage and just thinking about the first time i did those exercises maybe a month a month and a half ago and i really just couldn't do it and now i can but the second part so mentally like it takes a lot of mental discipline to do the workout every day that she gives you that workout to push through for the full 40 minutes to an hour, it really helped me structure my life and also made me feel really strong mentally. If that makes sense at all, to just have the internal knowledge that 
This is a program that I have stuck with for the past like six, seven, eight weeks, and I am still going strong. I'm still pushing through every workout. Like I am still overcoming obstacles in my life that are making it difficult or making me unmotivated. Like I'm still doing it. And I feel like that's just the amazing part. And now I wanna talk about some thoughts or general unique elements of this program compared to workouts I've done in the past. First of all, this program is very much so strength-based. So four out of the five workouts each week are strength workouts. They're not designed to make you sweat profusely and get your heart rate up to extreme levels. They're really meant to burn out your muscles and build strength. She does use fairly heavy dumbbells that not everyone has access to. For me, I know I only have 10 pound dumbbells, so that's just something I had to deal with. Yes, it was still challenging for me, but I just wanna point out, not everyone might have access to dumbbells. Number two, the one thing I loved about her program is it's only one workout video for each day. Other workout programs typically have two to three to four videos that you have to do, but hers is all together in one, which is great. The only thing about it is it is long sometimes. Like it was kind of difficult to squeeze in that like 45 minutes and it became closer to like an hour as the workouts got harder towards the end of the program. So that is also something to be mindful of. Number three, I love that her workout program focuses on the entire body. So you really have like a classic training split where you target different muscles throughout the days of the week. And I think the great thing about that though was that because arms were such an underrepresented muscle group in all of my previous workout experience, it was so nice to just be forced to work out my arms. Oh, also, super apartment friendly. The workouts don't typically involve a lot of jumping. They don't require a huge amount of space, but yes. So those are my main takeaways and notes. I absolutely loved this program. If you are considering trying this program or you don't know, let this be the sign that you should just go for it. I have loved doing this program for the past 10 weeks and I would highly, highly recommend it for anyone, regardless of your fitness level. Start as easy as you need to, take as many breaks as you need to. And even if you're super advanced, I'm positive you'll still find this challenging. And lastly, I'm sure some of you might have questions for what's up next or am I gonna do Epic 2? Right now, I am taking a break as I'm prepping for my race in two days and after my race I will probably also take the week pretty lightly, just chill, let my body and my joints have some recovery time. But afterwards, I'm thinking of trying to look into not just sticking with one long program again. I'm curious to kind of try out a combination of different influencers workouts. And I'm sure there are so many influencers out there that I haven't tried workouts from yet. And I really want to explore that. Also, just because of time constraints, I don't want to mentally commit myself to another full 10 weeks yet and that's why I won't be doing the Epic 2 program as of now. If you do decide to start the Epic 2 program or you're in the middle of it or you're still considering Epic 1, please leave a comment. Let me know how it's going for you. I honestly love reading everyone's comments and I respond to every single one. Other than that, I hope you really enjoyed this video and you found it entertaining and inspiring. Thanks for watching again, and I'll catch you in my next video. Easy, everything's perfect. Please don't change us.